it's the morning after I got back from my car camping trip. I was so tired when I got back. I went to bed at 10 and I woke up at half past 8. It's crazy. And we're back to rain again. But I did a better, a better trip this time and I feel absolutely fine, which is great. So knowing your limitations, not overdoing it, <clears throat> knowing when it's time to stop. But I was thinking as I was driving back about um, how you keep your sanity when you're trying to aim towards goals that curtail your life, so to speak, because because it gets boring. If you are, particularly when you're doing either things that are financial or things that are going to improve your health, so it might be that you're cutting back how much you spend, putting the money in the bank, saving for a rainy day, um, like me, trying to undo the damage to your non-existent retirement plans when you're already closer to retirement plans than you were starting work. Maybe it's your health and you need to cut back on types of food you eat. Maybe you need to eat less sugar, less processed bread, drink less. And I was thinking about the things that I enjoy doing at the moment, which help to keep me motivated. So I love doing spreadsheets. I love seeing the numbers go up in the bank. I love finding ways to save money, like doing the yellow sticker food shopping which has become a part of my life now. I don't even think about that anymore. Um, but I was also thinking about the things that you need to help you stay focused. So it's one of the reasons I do the car camping trips. I'd love to travel. I love to go out and explore. I love doing things to do with genealogy and history and exploring the places where my ancestors lived and all that sort of thing. But... And I noticed this when I was walking around in Keswick, is I'm doing it on a budget. So I slept in my car. That saved me over £100 in an overnight hotel somewhere. <clears throat> and I was walking around the town and everything, everything is geared towards spending money. So all the shops are selling you food and ice cream and... Uh, souvenirs and everywhere I went was crammed with tourists who were spending money on this or that. You had your people who were walkers and hikers but you know they were stopping and, and buying their fish and chips and things like that. All the car parks cost money, um, all the toilets cost money and it's like if you're trying not to spend money but you want to enjoy doing things away from home it's how do you find a way to not spend to stay on track with your goals but still do things that are different and feel like that you're not losing your mind while you do it so that's the challenge that I like of the car camping I like that I've pushed myself to not spend any money on a trip I bought some petrol and I filled my car up because if the car is full, I don't have to worry about what money I'm spending on petrol while I'm away. I don't have to worry about finding the cheapest garage or anything. So I had just over half an empty tank. So I put in, I think it was £40. But I haven't even spent half of that, half of that on petrol. So that means when it comes to my next going away trip for my parents, there will probably still be more than half a tank left. So it all has a knock on effect. So that's, and apart from that ice cream I bought, which you will see in the videos when it comes out, I'm still editing at the moment. I think, I think when this comes out, I will still be editing because I recorded so much. So I spent four quid on a little treat. Oh, that was it.
and I feel that I've just broken up the monotonous routine of life enough to help me stay on track. And when you are trying to save money on stuff and you're trying to you know, maybe it's saving money, maybe it's eating less, maybe it's driving your car less, whatever else it is that, uh, that you're trying to cut back on that you think is going to make your life less interesting. Look for ways that you can just keep your sanity because you'll break otherwise. And eventually things start to become a part of routine. So there are lots of things that I do now that are just life, like doing the yellow sticker shopping. Um, I don't go short of food, but I don't want for takeaways, I don't want for restaurant meals out. I don't miss any of that anymore. I've got enough to eat. I want more than enough to eat. I need to cut back on that as well. That's depressing. I need to cut back on that for my health as well. So that's a twofold. So improving my health and saving money. So I need to stop eating processed bread. I need to stop buying processed sugar things. Um, I do it because it's part of the buzz of yellow sticker, like you go into the supermarket and you're buying your, your, your cheese stuff and you find a really great deal and it's like, yes, I found a really great deal. And then you see like a celebrations cake for 75p and you think, that's a deal, how can I not want to buy that? And then you buy it, but you don't need it. And that is how they get you. That is how the shops get you. Because you think you're getting a deal when actually you didn't need to buy it in the first place. But we have this innate desire in us to, to, to get those things. It's like we're drawn to deals, even if they're not really deals. So that's my next challenge, is to try and cut back on some of the rubbish that I eat. So that's a new little challenge for me where everything else has kind of fallen into place. But then keeping things interesting. How do I keep my day-to-day, -day fairly mundane life interesting when I've taken out all the fun food because that was the thing that made the day interesting because I work from home, <clears throat> I work for myself, I live on my own, I live in a town where it's a bit naff, I don't really, I don't know anyone in the town really apart from like acquaintances that I'd say hello to in the street because I don't come from around here at all and I've moved so much, so, you know, my nearest friend here is an, over an hour away, and then the other one's two hours away, and then the other one is down in my parents, which is four and a half, five hours away, and luckily I'm an introvert, and I like my own company, and I like doing my own thing, and that doesn't worry me too much, but it's those sorts of things that break up a week, and make it slightly more interesting, which is why I do the car camping trips, which don't cost me much money, but get me away, get me out and about, break up the routine, and I really enjoy that. So that is how I prevent myself from just going mad trying to do this. And at some point, I've also done another video at some point, which is about... Um, when is it okay to start spending money again? Because once I'm able to spend a little bit more money, I mean, if anything, I'd probably spend it on petrol and go out and do more days out and things. Because that's the thing I like to do. And at the moment, I'm still trying to keep all those costs down because petrol is expensive. And if you're just spending it on pleasure things rather than things that you have to do, like go to work... Um, that's almost like frivolous spending, unnecessary spending. So that's probably how I would spend the money. I'd probably spend it on more petrol so that I could go and do days out, explore more, go further afield. But I don't really have much of a list of things to do at the moment. I have one thing that I want to do, which isn't even going to be that far, which I will probably do next month. I might do it in May, probably be next month because then that breaks up. So that means I was away March, beginning of April at my parents. I've done my May 
early May away trip if I do that in June and then in July I'll be back down at my parents again so that gives me some little little things to look forward to all the way through and you just need to lower your expectations and I know it's hard because everywhere you go everybody wants your money um, if you want to do anything interesting you think oh, it involves spending money um, it involves buying things it involves sitting in pubs or restaurants or paying for parking or staying in a hotel all these different things that want your money because that's how economies work and just finding finding ways of doing things for free so I've done that with the car camping and I wouldn't say I've mastered it um, the trip I've just done I definitely feel like okay I've now found the way to be able to sleep in my car and be able to actually sleep this was definitely my best night's sleep and I picked a good spot as well if I went back to the area I might go back to that same road um, because it was just so quiet and I was out the way I didn't, wasn't in anyone's way no one saw me it was brilliant and that's the kind of stealth camping that I like to do and you can find those places it just re requires a little bit of research beforehand and I like the planning I like you know picking the place where I'm going to go looking on Google Street View checking out the roads looking for um, where's the best place to stay planning out how far I'm then going to need to walk to the nearest places I need to be at, all that sort of stuff. I enjoy the planning of trips. Um, so yeah, so that's, um, that's, that's kind of my, my thought for the day post-camping trip, is how to keep your sanity when you're trying to cut back and trying to regulate your life a bit better for your own better future. I'm not doing this because I just don't want to spend money. I'm doing this because at 50 I decided I probably need to start putting something away for retirement because I don't want to be the person in retirement who just sits in front of the TV all day and does nothing. And I know people like that who just sit there all day eating crap and watching dreadful daytime TV. They don't do anything else. They never go anywhere. They never do anything. Their health is bad because they didn't look after themselves, not because they had things wrong with them that that were inevitable a lot of it was there's a lot of self-inflicted stuff going on there and I don't want to be that person which is why I need to cut back on on the rubbish food because I'm losing the battle with that at the moment and that worries me so new challenges find the things that motivate you find the things that give you joy whilst keeping you on track focus on that um, not everything that's fun has to involve spending money you just have to find other ways to do it. You can Google it. You can you can find the free stuff if you can be bothered. And it's about putting in the effort. It's about finding different ways to do things. And if the people you are with are not helping you with that, find other ways to do it. Maybe that you do stuff on your own more. And maybe that you find a new set of people. Um, I, I really wanted to join like Ramblers, like walking groups and stuff, but... They involved a lot of money because everyone had to meet at, say, a train station and get on a train to go somewhere and do a day out and then they'd stop at somewhere to eat along the way and then you'd have to get back and it was like, this is going to cost me more money than I have available to spend at the moment. And this was a few years ago before I'd really got back on track with my finances and I couldn't afford to join these groups because these were like slightly more affluent retired people so they had the, the money to spend. They paid off their mortgages and what have you. And uh, so, you know, they didn't think anything of that. But for me, that's, it's not available. And I need new walking boots. Mine are falling apart. And I have to decide, do I go for more second-hand ones? Do I buy brand new ones and have something that lasts longer but costs a lot more money? I need new trainers. And there's all these little things that I need to justify, plan for, all that sort of thing. So motivations, motivations all the way. Find the things that give you joy whilst keeping you on track and helps you keep your sanity, breaks up the routine, the boredom of curtailing your life a bit and see how you get on. So that's my thought for the day um, as I look out the window at yet more rain. We had some beautiful days when I was in Keswick. It was like the middle of summer. It was t-shirt weather. It was so beautiful and it was so warm. And now we're back to normal spring. So that's that. So um, I feel motivated though to carry on. 
even though I know that you know it's going to be quite routine like for a while um, but if I plan if I plan a fun trip for for June and then I'll be away again in July that breaks it up and gives you things to look forward to so onwards and upwards and I hope that's been useful um, I'll speak to you soon see ya bye